Thursday night and we're back on air. This is the STC, the Sim Racing Team Challenge, brought to you um, by none other than Jose Estrada, David Garcia and me, myself, your friendly voice, Eckhart von Glan, speaking to you live from snowy northern Germany. Jose, everything uh, all set and ready for the second to last race? Yes, uh, it seems so, Eckhart. Brilliant. David's out uh, testing the um, pace car, as I can see, but maybe you're also on air. David, can you hear me and say good night? Yes, of course. Good night, Eckhart. Good night, guys. Okay, and that leads us to our venue tonight. Second to last race, I already said that, and we are at virtual Interlagos in Brazil, so the outside temperature here is something like 22 to 25 degrees Celsius, which for all those of us living in the north, uh, Northern Europe or the North of America or Canada is quite unbelievable and uh, it's uh, a well-known track it's a Formula One track it's we're running the the modern version it's much shorter than the older one coming back to that later 15 turns and about four kilometers long the poster of course I think as a blue flagger is by far the best of the season <laughs> anyway this uh, brings us to the overall standings um, with only two races to go, tonight's race and then next week's race at Hamilton, and uh, still leading the table, though um, it's only a very close lead, is a game racer flat out racing, that's the black and um, very colorful cars, and they're at 375 points, they're followed by the Roaring Pipes Maniacs, that's the white and orange cars for you at 369 points. They racked up one more win, uh, four wins to three, but um, uh, had some problems along the way. And then a uh, newcomer team in three, Gubklubben from Sweden, blue and yellow cars at 290 points already out of the championship race. And the Black Rebels following uh, with quite a sizable gap of about um, 60 points there in four. And they are really having to defend tonight against Flying Dutchman Racing. Um, 231, then Torment Motorsports from um, the United States, uh, fielding only one player tonight uh, at 215, Project D from France at 193, Cors Online from Italy at 183, that's another tight battle there, then Motor AG from Romania at 146, uh, both these players have to start from the back of the grid, a uh, penalty for them. And then uh, Game Racer Flat Out Club, the junior team, um, at 10 with 134. That's another battle to watch there with Motor AG and defending against Black Visor Motorsport in 11. However, they also only field one player tonight. And the uh, next team with only one player is the Blue Flag Racing, my team uh, at 109 points. And then last and not on the grid tonight, Amy Racing. So we do have a slightly diminished grid. However, that shouldn't keep us from having a great race here at Interlagos. Well, um, time, uh, Chaussé, I'd say, for the rundown of the um, qualification results. Just give me the go ahead and um, I'll start. Guys, while you. Yes, while let's you go. Make, while you, before you make the qualification round, round up, have you yep. seen it is getting very, very dark here outside? Yep, just notice it. As you're speaking, it is kind of grayish in the background. Um, the weather forecast was uh, sunny, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, but you know, it is the rainy. Uh, rainy season. Period. season. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it happens. It happens in real life too, and doesn't it? That in Brazil, um, the weather can change rather quickly. So let's see what strategy teams um, will have to uh, run here at Interlagos, bumpy and hilly Interlagos. Well then, the rundown of the grid for you in position number one, pole position for Marcin Skrupczak. The fast Polish guy of the Roaring Pipes Maniacs clinches another pole, and that means one point more in the overall standings for the Roaring Pipes Maniacs, which means they are within five points of the flat-out 
guys. And uh, position number two is a course online player for you. It's uh, Marco Giuliato. Then in position number three, the second of the Maniacs, Rami Kaukola, who, if I remember correctly, won the last race in the STC. In position number four, and that is a bit of a surprise, not uh, a game racer flat out player, but a game racer flat out club player, that's Risto Kapet, with a surprising and extremely fast qualification lap. Then in five, um, Miko Korkiakoski, front runner again for the game racer flat out. And um, Followed in position number six by Mr. Van Bommel, Marcin Van Bommel, uh, for the Dutch racing team Flying Dutchman. He is followed in position number seven by the second of the flat out racing cars, Ian Wilton. There. Followed in position number eight by the only black visor on the grid, that is Ben Tusting. Which brings us to number nine, second of the Flying Dutchman. So they have both their cars in the top ten, which is an outstanding result. Um, and uh, don't remember if this happened before in the season. Uh, put me right, guys. Uh, uh, it seems to me this is the first time you put both your cars in the top ten, and that's Hugo Heckenberg. He is in nine. He is followed by the Good Club player Robin Johansson in position number ten, who in turn is followed by the second of the course online cars and that's uh, Nicola Dorigatti for you. Dorigatti leads us uh, straight on to Kogoti and those of you who've been following the series know that this can't be anything else than a Project D car. In this case it is Ludovic Kogoti who's with us tonight in position number 12. He's followed by the only blue flagger on the grid tonight, Mikael Larsson in 13 and I hope this is a lucky number because Mr. Larson's season so far has been extremely unlucky. Go Mickey, go! Then in 14, Luc Mongas, a uh, French name again tells you a with Project D, followed in 15 by another blue and yellow Gup Klubben car, that's Bosse Jonasson. And then Pretty much down the grid, um, not very good news uh, for my uh, for Chaussé and David because that's their home team. It's the Black Rebels' first racer. It's Ben Buitendijk in 16. He is followed in 17 by Danny Asbury, who is um, a player for the Torrent Motorsports. Sorry. Uh, Torrent Motorsports, I think I uh, cut myself off there. And then in 18, it's the second of the Black Rebels, uh, my co-commentator Andreas Holtgreen, who will be busy on the track tonight, and Hans can't be up here with me. We're moving into the race now, but enough time, I think, to finish the rundown, because the guys will do the outlap first, and then that means we still have time to go to the grid a little later on. So, uh, we're at 18 with Andreas Holtgreen. Uh, good luck, Andreas, for that race tonight. Missing you up here in the commentator booth. And then um, the Flat Out Club second car, it's um, Mr. Johnson, Bevan Johnson, in 19. And then the two Motor AG cars uh, put at the back of the grid without a qualification time. That's their fastest guy, uh, Michael Bräutigam, in 20. And in 21, it's Dinka Anjay. Well, that's your roundup, that's your lineup, and uh, that means we're pretty much about to start the race. But before we go there, uh, Chaussé, prediction from you. Will uh, the Roaring Pipes be able to take that one and three um, to the finish line? Well, I think that's very, very possible, but uh, I also think that uh, Flat Out Club, uh, Flat Out Racing, sorry, will uh, be closer than than it seems now. I also have the feeling that they had uh, some problems in the qualification, and that in the race we will see 
Mikko Korkiakoski and Ian Wilton trying to put as much pressure as they can on the Roaring Pipes Maniacs. And I also wonder about that flat out club, that game racer flat out club up there uh, in position number four, Risto Kapet. And I wouldn't be so surprised if we would see Korkiakoski slipping by pretty easily in one of the first uh, few laps, at least that is, if I were in their team, what I would tell the guys on TeamSpeak. So, we're all set and ready to go, and um, just give me a thumbs up, Jose, by the time the camera has reached the grid. Yes, we are We are following the, the cars now, Eckhart. Brilliant, that means we see David Garcia in the pace car uh, moving to the front of the grid. Making a little mental note here to all game developers, do give us a game <laughs> with a pace car that can actually start in front of real solid pace car option would be much appreciated, I think, by many leagues the world over. Well, here we are then. Uh, they're moving out, and um, other than in Formula One, it's not really a question whether the engine will start or not. That always works out nicely, and we see a bunch of 21 of the Dorans out here on the track. Gives me a little bit um, of time to introduce the track to you. Possibly most of you know it. It's uh, We're through the Senna S now, uh, named of course after Ayrton uh, Senna. Then now the cars are in uh, Curva do Sol, which even though I don't speak Portuguese, probably translates as a uh, turn of the sun. We're out onto uh, a long straight, the Reta Oposta which is only part of a much, much longer straight uh, that uh, used to be um, between 1940 and 1980. However, uh, cars, uh, especially Formula One cars, were simply getting too fast for that track. They used to have three really long straights and then with very long turns in between. So the car was short, sorry, the track was shortened. And now we are in uh, Desquida do Lajo which I suppose means descent of the lake, and you just could see a little virtual pond there on the inside of turns number four and five. We're approaching Ferradura, uh, which has a really uh, huge runoff area. However, if you get on that green um, tarmac or concrete or whatever it is, and they're now in Laringina, Curva do Laringina, uh, Ferradura, if you get on that green stuff, it's bumpy like there is no tomorrow, so you better not get up there. You might even lose your car there. Uh, now they're in um, turn 8 and 9. Uh, they're out of 9 now, which is called Pinerinho, my favorite name on the track here, and they are approaching uh, Bico de Pato. Uh, it's a really nasty track because it dips in and then it uh, goes up again at the same time. It's not really a hairpin, but it's not really um, a, a full turn either, so it's kind of in between everything. And then it's downhill at full speed uh, through Mergiulio and approaching what I think is pronounced um, Junthao, though my Portuguese, as I must say, is non-existent. It's basically now out onto the uh, start and finish straight. There's two more kinks, turn 13, they're in now, and then turn 14, which is called Subira dos Boxes. Obviously, that has something to do with the pit lane entry, which is uh, about there, and uh, we'll now see Garcia speeding up, which means that it's up to Marcin Skripchak to start the race proper. And we're about to witness the start to the second to last race of the season. No, Garcia stays out for another lap. I don't think he's happy with the way the grid is organized in the back there. Uh, we saw many people moving left and right, left and right. Uh, there wasn't a crash as far as I have seen, but it seems that David is not happy with the lineup as it is. And we're doing a second lap here at Virtual Interlagos.
So, uh, second lap gives me time uh, to rummage through my papers and I come up with a point system. Um, because obviously with uh, only two races to go, um, the points to be awarded are uh, really very, very decisive tonight. The first in, uh, the winner of the race gets 32 points. Second position gets 29 points, so three points less. Third position gets 26 points, another gap of three points, and position number four gets 23 points, which is another gap of uh, three points. So the first four are all separated by three points. From then on, it is one point um, less per position. So position five gets 22, position six, 21, position seven, 20, and so on. This is just to remind you, um, if you want to figure out uh, how the teams are faring, uh, especially, of course, the Roaring Pipes Maniacs and the Game Racer flat out, um, keep in mind that the first four positions are three points separated, and then from position number five, we have one point gaps. Also, there's a point awarded for the pole position, which went to the Roaring Pipes Maniacs, obviously, and another point awarded to the fastest lap, which I will ask uh, David Garcia to check from time to time once we're within, I'd say, the last 10 minutes or so of the race. So here we are then. Second attempt at a start. Let's see if this time we see Garcia speeding up. Yes, he does. Pulling away, and I can see that the lineup is now really neat. Everyone's in a nice single file line, and David moves into the pit lane, and now again for the second time it's up to Marcin Skripczak, and this time he starts to race for sure. He's speeding out, and we're on the way, and they're approaching the first turn, and Skripczak already has to make defensive moves against that course online racer, and there's an attack by the flat-out racer junior team, and um, Rami Kapula can hold his position. That was a little touch there, but nothing uh, obviously happened. So Skripczak still stays in one, but under heavy pressure from uh, Giuliato for the course online. And Kaukula stays in three. And here we have Korkiakoskia. Korkiakoski already moving into position number four, as I predicted. So he is liable to try to open up the hunt now on Rami Kaukula. These two have been fighting basically a lot of fights this season. And uh, Kaukula in three, Korkiakoski in four, and then I think a flying Dutchman in five, and that is Marcin van Bommel. So, lots of action here in the first turns. It seems, however, that situation has uh, cooled down a little. We see uh, Stripchak still in one, followed by Giuliato in two, and um, then in three, Kaukola with uh, Korkiakoski already in close pursuit, and then a little tiny wee bit of a gap opening to that um, Game Racer flat out club player in number four, and that of course is Risto Kapet. And David should be with me now. Uh, David, what was the reason uh, we had to do uh, two laps in the pace car? Well, uh, ending the first lap, there have been a little, a little contact between two or three cars at the back of the pack. Okay. And and they, were, they opened a little gap with the with the group, so I could not grant uh, the start of the race with with that situation on track. Oh, perfect. So, but then uh, everything went absolutely smooth the second time round, and here in the background we see Korkiakoski trying to make a move on Kaukola for the first time in the race. Uh, I think we can start counting because uh, no one defends like Rami. Uh, he's one to follow his line uh, as if the car is stuck with extra glue. Um, to the track and it will be extremely difficult for Mikko Korkiakoski to find a way past and a way past he must find because if the result would stay like this uh, the Maniacs would uh, definitely get way more points than the Game Racer flat out players and they would uh, be the new number one after tonight's race but we're only in lap two it's a bit early um, to call this uh, race over and uh, we see Skripczak heading out onto the start and finish straight. Little gap opening to Giuliato, a bit more of a gap to Kaukula, so Chaussee, I suppose. Let's switch to position number three. 
because I expect there is an attack by Korkiakowski. And there is the attack, and there is a touch, there is a touch, Korkiakowski and Kalkuda touch, Korkiakowski style. Ooh, he tries to move fast there in the tight turn after the start and finish in that Senna S. And there's been a bit of argy bargy here, both cars still running. I hope that none of the cars was seriously damaged in that. The way I saw it, um, Korkiakowski tried to move to the, what is it, the left-hand side of Kaukula on the straight and the second time, and here they touch again, and Korkiakowski moves past. Kaukula is out. Whoa. He's down to six, down to seven, down to eight, down to nine, down to ten, eleven, before we can rejoin, and I hope that car is still working perfectly. So Korkiakowski, in effect, not just past Kaukula, sends Kaukula flying, and Kaukula is down to 13 and now has a long way to go back up. This puts the game racer flat out uh, at the top of the championship table again, because definitely now Rami Kaukula is uh, a couple of positions down to the second uh, flat out club, sorry, flat out racer who uh, is. Um, blah, 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 blah. Quick look here, Ian Wilton, and he should be somewhere in position seven or eight. Whoa, that was uh, quite a touch, wasn't it, uh, David? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a cut. I, I would like to see a replay of it because I am not sure if Miko had the, the position already yep. won. Yes, I wouldn't be one to judge now straight away without an instant replay, so I'll just keep mum on that. Uh, let's say it was a very close situation. Yeah, indeed. Well, well, there was a lot of action uh, in the back. It's always, uh, it's also that um, a fact that Giuliato uh, moved in a little closer to Marcin Skripchak at the top, and uh, Korkiakowski is now trying to close the gap uh, to Giuliato and uh, trying to make uh, a second move here on his way up. And um, look at the gap behind um, Korkiakowski. That is where we can see that. Um, fourth position, Risto Carpet cannot quite follow and he is under immense pressure, under huge pressure from Marcin van Bommel. Van Bommel for the Flying Dutchman Racing putting a lot of pressure on Risto Carpet for the um, Game Racer Flat Out Club and uh, it looks as if in this lap or in the following lap um, Van Bommel might make a move on Risto Carpet. It might even be that as they go into the Senna S now that move is about to happen. They go down the front line, uh, down the start and finish straight together. Now Van Bommel is on the outside. He's trying to move past on the outside. That just, it might work. Carpet on the grass now. And Van Bommel is past. That was a superb move. Absolutely marvelously executed by uh, Martin van Bommel here for the Flying Dutchman Racing. And they're up in four. And I can't remember. Uh, did we see them on the podium this year? Uh, David, can you remember a Flying Dutchman racer in position one, two, or three? Well, I, I really can't remember, but I would say that if they ha haven't been in podium yet, they, they have been very close, I'm pretty sure of it. P4, yep. P5, and possibly yep. they have been they have been in podium, Eckhart. Yeah, I can, but I can't remember at this moment, so uh, that looks like one of the best positions so far here for the Flying Dutchman Racing for Marcin van Bommel. I will check this information for you, Eckhart. Oh, brilliant, David. Thank you very much indeed.
Well, we're in P3 with Mikko Korkiakowski, and as I said, he's uh, closing the gap. He has already closed the gap to Marco Giuliato, took him all of sector of two laps, and Giuliato now uh, in two under pressure from Korkiakowski in three, but at the same time, Giuliato putting pressure on Marcin Skripczak. This is really what I would call a nice uh, threesome here at the top. Uh, Marcin Skripczak. Absolutely fast guy from the Roaring Pipes Maniacs, pole sitter here at Interlagos, and he really has to defend against uh, Marco Giuliato because Giuliato is uh, simply, um, well, he's taking the pressure from uh, Korkiakowski and he is applying it to Skripczak. So Skripczak really is pressured by two players at the same time, or so it looks to me. And this is the turn for those of you who are into Formula One, uh, where, if I remember correctly, Hamilton won his championship uh, like three years ago. Yep, three years ago, that last turn in Interlagos. And so now they're out uh, through um, Archibancadas, which is turn number 15. And then Giuliato making a move here. Ooh, almost sliding into Stripcheck there. He wanted to go past on the left hand side. Stripcheck closed the door just a little and then. Trying to move back to the right-hand side, uh, Giuliato almost lost it, or so it seemed to me, on the start and finish straight, but uh, Skripczak still defending here, and it looks as if Giuliato is, at this point in the race, the slightly, slightly faster player. And these three, look at the gap that is opening to the other ones, and Korkiakowski is playing it safe at this point. I think it's a bit like um, he's letting Giuliato do the dirty work. Um, He's letting Giuliato put the pressure on Scriptcheck. He's letting Giuliato wear Scriptcheck down, and let's see how long Marcin can stand the pressure. Okay, Eckhart, I have some data for you if you need it. Brilliant! Yeah, jump in. Okay, we uh, the best result of Flying Dutchman Racing was a P5 at the Spa Franco Champs, and a P4 at, at Bahrain. Hey, you were right. Brilliant. Yeah, very, very close. I think they already deserve to to be on the podium. Yep, me think so too. So let's hope that they can make it on the podium. However, this would mean that one of the top three there would have to um, relinquish their position. And uh, they all three would deserve, of course, a top three notch here, a top three spot. And uh, so let's see how that uh, plays out. By the way, Eckhart, I don't know if you already yep. mentioned mentioned it in the broadcast. Uh, the the sky is turning darker again, getting darker and darker. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, the forecast says raining. The track conditions are dry. Yep. So, and there we see a move by um, Giuliato, this really close fighting now, and I think the last thing the players want to have now is virtual rain, because that would definitely complicate the situation totally. We're only, um, well, we're already um, about 20 minutes into the, into the game, 15 to 20 minutes, and um, changing the tires now would really fit nobody's strategy, I would say. And yes, there's a touch by Giuliato, it sends Scripchak off a little, and Korkiakowski trying to make a move as well, he touches Scripchak, Scripchak regains, no he doesn't. Korkiakowski trying to make a move as Giuliato was doing the dirty work, and uh, Korkiakowski slips through too, and that puts Scripchak in position number three, and this has not been the best first seven or eight laps for the Roaring Pipes Maniacs, let me tell you that. It's um, a game racer flat out player in position two now, that's Mikko Korkiakowski. It's a course online player in lead, uh, something that we saw before, uh, namely in last race. And it's the Roaring Pipes Maniacs down to three and then down to, I would suppose, position number 10 or so for, um, yes, position number 10 or nine for um, Rami Kaukula, who had that get together with uh, Mikko Korkiakowski earlier on. Um, that was another very, very close move, wasn't it, David? Yes, yes, indeed. It was very, very close, I got it. Very, very close. 
And let me tell I you that, um, yeah, David, go, go no, on. No, no, go, go, go ahead, go ahead, Eckhart. I was just pointing to uh, the Flying Dutchman racer, um, to Martin van Bommel, who, because these three have been busy, have been occupied with each other, who is uh, closing the gap. Uh, look at that. He is almost now um, within striking distance of Martin Scripshack, so it might be that the three people in front here are soon four, which would then um, open another set of uh, very intriguing possibilities. Yeah, 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 exactly. Anyway, let's see if if uh, Marco can can keep that first uh, position because it it uh, have been looking a bit at the beginning of the race like if Miko uh, was a bit faster than him. Yep. So let's see, let's see how how it goes. Yep. And uh, I think. Miko also, after making that move on Rami, he's going to be a bit more careful now, um, I suppose so, and um, so I suppose that it'll be a bit easier for Marco Giuliato to keep to that position, and I mean, yes, it is about winning, but it's also about uh, bringing the points home, isn't it? Yeah, of course, of course. And at the moment, both uh, flat out racing, game racer cars are, are ahead of the RPM car, so Yep. They could focus on, on, on this Eckhart, as you say, taking the points home. Yeah, and here's another one. Um, it looks to me as if Stripshank has serious problems with his ride. Um, trying to look at him, uh, at the way the Doran behaves in the brake zones, it's, uh, at least from my view, it's all over the place. So it seems that um, being hit there by Korkiakoski, and I couldn't quite see it, whether it was Giuliato or Korkiakoski, anyway, being sent off a little, and about the place we're in right now, two laps ago, uh, maybe his suspension has suffered a little, and uh, it looks to me as if Scripchak cannot quite keep the pace that the other two are setting. Yeah, it looks, and now looks we like have right now. Yeah, and we also have a track, and we have rain. Uh, it's beginning to drizzle a little. We see um, these uh, telling slightly grey lines behind the, the Dorans, and that might put everything, uh, throw everything out of order again. Well, um, I'd say time for our first rundown because we've been so focused and it's been so important to focus on the top three, four positions here with the rain coming down now quite heavily in Interlagos that I think we should um, do a very quick rundown of the grid uh, to let people see where their teams are. And I suppose we're in position number three with Marching Scripshack at the moment. Is that correct, Jose? Well, uh, no, we are actually in P1 and... Uh... I really did not expect it, uh, the rain, honestly, <laughs> at all. <laughs> well, neither did I, neither did I, and it wasn't a topic at all on our team forum. Uh, I wonder about the other teams, though. Um, no one even thought about it. The, the topic was all um, uh, also on the forum at uh, Race Department, um, the, the heat. And I think the rain is pretty unexpected for everybody. So here we go then, uh, Marco Giuliato for Course Online, uh, leading the race ever since he moved past Marching Scripchak, uh, pretty much where we are now, a couple of laps ago, he is in position number one, and it looks as if Korkiakoski cannot quite follow him, because Miko Korkiakoski in two and already a little way down, at least uh, much further down than he used to be. In three, and this is where the action is right now, we see uh, two Dutch cars. We see Martin Scripshack for the Roaring Pipes Maniacs defending with a brilliant move here against Martin van Bommel. And now they touch. Now they touch, just as we follow them. Uh, not Scripshack's mistake at all, I would say. Uh, they were running side by side, and then uh, Scripshack moved just a little bit to the left. But um, I'm not quite sure about that move. Uh, looked pretty innocent to me, but they touch anyway, and uh, Van Bommel has problems uh, sticking to the gray stuff, and he is still now in four and possibly gaining speed for the next attack. In five, we have Risto Kapet down one position, as expected uh, from the lineup on the grid for the Game Racer Flat Out Club. In position number six, it is Ben Tusting for the Black Visors. Uh, brilliant result uh, for the risers if they can take that one home. In seven, Ian Wilton, second of the Game Racer flat out cars. So he is still way ahead of Rami Kaukula. 
In eight, Robin Johansson for the um, Gup Klubben. That means he moved up two positions. And one position that he gained was from Hugo Heckenberg, who is still a nine, uh, though the people in front and behind have changed slightly. In position number 10, uh, Ludovic Kugotti up two positions from 12 at the beginning of the race, and he is tailed by Rami Kaukula. Rami on his way up the grid, but obviously with a dented uh, racer because uh, he hasn't really progressed very far. He was um, in, I think, 15 after that spin, after that uh, touch there, and after having to leave the track, and now he's only up to 11, which isn't very far. However, in 12, as I said, very fast guy, Michael Bräutigam for the Motor AG had to start from position 20 and already moved up to 12 and uh, obviously following in Rami's footsteps. 13, Luc Mongas for the Project D and very closely indeed followed by Nicola Dorigatti, second of the Corus Online players, bit dented car here, front right, so obviously he has been in trouble before. Dorigatti is in turn followed by Mikael Larsson of the Blue Flag Racing, uh, the poster car here for the race tonight, uh, down two positions for Mikke. Then in 16, Dinka Andre, who uh, was on 21 on the grid, and uh, another player for Motorsports AG. Sorry, for Motor AG, followed by the second Gubklubben player, Bosse Jonasson. And uh, then we have the first Black Rebels car, that's Ben Buitendijk. In position 18, he was in 16, so he also dropped two positions. That's the two Motor AG guys, actually, guys. Um, that he had to let pass. Yes, David? Let, let me interrupt the, the roundup for a second. Martin Van Bommel already made his move on, on Martin, so they switch positions. Mar Martin is P3, Martin skips back his position 4. Thank you very much for that information. So. Sorry guys if we missed that move, but the rundown is good and old-fashioned here at the STC. And we do catch the odd maneuver in the rundown, because here we just see Ben Buitendijk defending against the Game Racer flat-out club player Bevan Johnson, who, uh, because Buitendijk was a little uh, far out on the curbs, uh, has gained a lot of time and uh, might be in a position to make a move um, in the near future. 19 for Bevan Johnson, 20. Uh, for Danny Asbury, which means he lost uh, three positions uh, to his grid position already, and which again means that uh, my co-commentator Andreas, hello Andreas, Andreas Hultgreen, uh, we find him in 21, and that means he is at this moment um, trading the pack, he is uh, the last player on the grid at this moment. So that was your first rundown here with uh, the race uh, pretty much half an hour underway. Um, we've seen lots of action at the top and all of this of course brought to you live by thegamehosters.net and by psrtv.com. Okay, guys, I, I have been checking and looking at, at Rami's car's performance in the last laps, and I would say that both, both RPM cars maybe, maybe have too much wing, because it uh, looks like uh, they are a bit faster than, than the rest of the field on the, you know, on the corners, but... Yep. Rami is not even able to get closer to Ludovic Cogotti on the on the straights, and and Michael Rotigan okay. is is getting very very close on the straights to Rami. So looks like it. Looks like both RPM cars are are having that kind of, of problems with the wings. 
Yeah, do you also think it might be that they are um, carrying a lot more fuel? They're on a one pit stop strategy, whereas most of the others obviously will be on a two pitter. Could be, could be as well. Let's let's see. Maybe they are a bit slower now because because they are on more fuel and maybe hard tires. If if we compare his pa their their pace now with the the pace they had on yeah, talking on of pits, quali. um I've just seen Rami go into the pits, and I've also seen Ian Wilton of the um, Game Racer and, Flat Out going into the Miko. pits. So, and Miko Korkiakowski too. So, uh, lots of action in the pits at the moment, and uh, both RPM cars in the pits. Also, and both, uh, Marcin Stripchak, and both uh, flat out cars. So, that will be very yeah. interesting to see how they uh, get back out on the track. And, uh, Chausse, uh, do we see that on the screen? Yes, and uh, Miko is out in P13. Yes, indeed. And there we see him uh, just in front of uh, Gup Club and player um, Bosse Jonasson. Miko out in 13. And uh, let's see, Martin Stripchak out in 14. Ian Wilton out in 17. And Rami Kaukula out in 18. So we still have both the flat out players in front of uh, both the Roaring Pipes Maniacs. And um, at this point in the race, this means that the flat out will definitely gain some positions. And I can just see one of the Black Rebels in serious trouble uh, somewhere out um, on the green there. And uh, that didn't look too good. Uh, looks as if Guys. one of the Black Rebels players is in trouble. Yes, David. P1, Marco Giuliato from Coris is on pit right now. Okay. I can't can't be sure, but to me it looked looked a bit like he was a bit over the speed limit at the pit entrance. So I am not sure. I can't I can I can tell you, but but maybe he 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 have a penalty after that. Okay, we'll see. Well, we have lots of action in the pits. We have Ludovic Kogotti in the pits, Michael Bräutigam in the pits, Ben Tusting just leaving the pits, just finished his pit stop, sorry, pit stop, very close to uh, another of the flat out club cars in the pits. So lots and lots of action there. And we also have another Gup Club player, that's Bosse Jonasson going into the pits. And we have the only Torrent uh, car also pitting at this point. So, uh, seems to be that basically everyone is moving into that first pit window and uh, Risto Kapet in 11 uh, with Ian Wilton in 12 and just in front of those it's Ben Tusting in 10. That is the closest battle on, uh, the, f on the grid at the moment. Um, In 10, Ben Tusting for the Black Visor Motorsports, defending mightily with fresh tires and obviously a full tank nice. here against um, Ian Wilton. Oh, sorry, against Risto Carpet with Ian Wilton looking on. And then we have Rami Kaukula uh, waiting to see what's ha what happens with these uh, three guys in front. Uh, David. Yes, Martin Van Hommel, who was leading the race since now, is at pit. And Hugo Heckenberg and Luke Mangas. And Nicola Dorigati are at pit as well. And this is a really close fight. Risto Carpet practically, you know, <laughs> basically in uh, the Doran in front, in the Black Visor Motorsports Whoa. car, and he is squeezing past. What a superb move! Uh, four nice cuts here. No, RPM guy doesn't cut, but uh, that's what the game allows, so that's what we do. And the Risto Cuphead moved past here in position number six, and it might be that the Black Visor player, that Ben Tusting, is now up for grabs uh, for Ian Wilton as well, because he obviously lost his rhythm a little in that maneuver. And uh, Wilton now very, very close, and Wilton at the same time under pressure from Rami Kaukula. At the end of the day, this might be um, a, a good um, thing for Kaukula. He might find a chance to slip by Ian Wilson yeah. in all that argy bargy going on here. Yeah, it's uh, way more interesting right now than, than 
before the pit stop. Now the Rami has get closer to the end. And yes. Let's see, let's see how it goes in the next laps. Yep, he's well within striking distance and we can see that the Risto carpet is moving away uh, at a gigantic speed here and uh, is opening up a gap quickly to Ben Tustin, who doesn't seem to have the pace at this point in the race to follow him. Uh, however, Wilton does have um, a lot of work to do just keeping Kaukula behind. But looking yeah. at the, uh, the qualification times, uh, I still suppose that there's something wrong with Kaukula's car because um, he was easily faster than Wilton in the qualification and I suppose also in the other sessions I didn't follow. Oh, and now there's a slide here. A slide by Risto Carpet. And he's off the track and he's down and Kaukula gains another position. Carpet down in seven, Kaukula up in six, and Ian Wilton in five, and Ben Tusting in four. So that was lucky for Kaukula. A little slide there as they went through the center S, actually coming out of the center S and going across the curves there. Um, carpet lost it, uh, Wilton slips by, Tusting slips by, Kaukula slips by. And Eckhart, let me, let me tell yep. you that, in my opinion, they have been a, bit, uh, a losing team after the the, all the pit stops and it have been flying Dutchman racing they have stopped maybe two or three laps later than the guys in front and that yep. have have killed them you know Martin oh. who was fighting for the for the podium is currently at P9 yep and we find Hugo Heckenberg in 12 so yes they yeah. have definitely lost a lot of positions however might be they were the only ones taking on fuel, that would explain uh, a longer pit uh, time, and might be that in the second round of stops they will be the only ones not taking on fuel, and then they'll make up for it. Yeah, possibly, but, uh, you know, even if... Well, let's see, let's see, you're right, I got Normally, if you have to take fuel in the second stop, uh, you take less fuel, unless... Yes. You, you start the race with the full tank. Yes, it can sometimes be um, uh, the unexpected thing to do, can't count it. Uh, sometimes really part of the strategy is just to do it differently, uh, just to come up with a different strategy and then uh, turns out you're the lucky one who was the only one who came up with that strategy. But yeah. talking of strategy, we still have a superb fight here and now we see a car slowing down dramatically. It's um, a Game Racer Flat Out Club player but he's a lap down, he is a lap down, so um, he obviously got blue flags shown by the virtual marshals here. And uh, that maneuver, why ever put um, Ian Wilton uh, within striking distance of Rami Kaukula. Rami now um, about to make a move on Ian. I would say Ian Wilton already taking what I would call a slightly defensive line here um, in that turn in uh, Bico de Pato. And now out and into that turn where Hamilton gained the, the world championship into Hunsao. And out of Hunsao. Let's see, you t uh, told us that uh, the RPMs are slow on the start and finish straight. Let's see what happens. Wilton with Kaukula and Kaukula seems to be in the slipstream, stream, but yes, you're dead right, David. Uh, there's no chance he can make a move on him at the end of that straight. He must wait for a mistake that the other player does in the turns. Otherwise, I see little to no chance of Kaukula moving past. Yeah. And look at that, in the turns he is really close, very close indeed. The uh, RPM car seems to be perfectly balanced in the turns. This, and if you this look at the back... Yes, Jose. No, I was just going to say that this remer remembers me Abu Dhabi 2010, for some reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and look at that, he is really close in the turns in that, what I would call the infield section, which is really up and down and up and down, uh, fantastic to play, um, but very, very difficult at the same time with the Doran, um, because... <laughs> That can be so light on the back. And we saw a Black Rebels racer there, but obviously just making room for this uh, train of players uh, rushing past here. And um, Kaukula, very close, but where on earth does he want to make a move? Um, uh, Wilton knows what's he, what he's doing, and Wilton, we will see him pull away again 
And uh, no matter how well Kalkula hits the exit of that uh, turn number 12, uh, Hunsao there, uh, Wilton obviously is much faster on the straight. No, it's the other way around. It's um, that Kalkula has to defend against that um, game racer flat out club player against Risto Carpet, who is not making a move, but who might make a move in one of the following laps. Senna S and uh, Kalkula very close indeed. And in the back, um, Chassé and David, we already see the Moto AG player uh, Michael Bräutigam. And remember, he was uh, 20 on the on the grid after the qualification, and he is now in five, six, seven, eight. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It is a it is a pity that uh, his team failed to place the allocation third time on, of the season because yeah. Ma Michael is is really skilled. He's really fast. Remember, he, is, he was yes. the one winning at Le Mans, starting yes, indeed. from the back yes, again. Indeed. Yes. That um, would have been great to, to watch him uh, starting the race a bit ahead, Eckhart. Yeah, definitely. He would definitely be able to uh, look at the speed. And, oh, look at those two here, Ian Wilson and Rami Kaukula. And Rami um, really showing us the gentleman way to drive. Um, taking the car sideways to avoid bumping into Wilton here because um, uh, Wilton obviously uh, definitely not uh, on purpose but uh, got a bit slower in the turn and then Kaukula had serious trouble uh, not hitting him but uh, made his car slide a little and stayed safely behind so and the fight between those two is so close that uh, actually the Black Visor player Ben Tusting can pull away and um, at the, on the other hand, Risto Carpet is having some problems there, and he now has brought it up um, yes. on his back. He, he, and, uh, Risto yes. lost, lost a bit the car at the beginning of yes. the straight yes. in, the, in the third gear left-hander, so Mikkel yep. took his chance to get closer. Yep, and if you lose it there, uh, it means that you're, um, you're, you're stimmied, you do have a problem the whole long straight, and that is awfully long if, if you're not up to speed. And, my, and Michael is very, He very is close. definitely, yeah. And there we have Michael Bräutigam. Michael Bräutigam very close indeed to Risto Carpet. And if you just look at the grid positions, uh, Carpet was in uh, 4 and Bräutigam was in 20. And now here is Bräutigam. He is very nearly touching him, he is oh. doing whatever he can to not touch him, but he is definitely faster. So I suppose that at the end of uh, the long straight, approaching the Senna S, uh, Bräutigam will make a move. He's taking a very long line here, trying to get into the slipstream, which works perfectly. And yes, it's Marcin van Bommel too, who has uh, picked up the chance and who has uh, <laughs> yes. closed the gap to the two and it's the umpteenth time this race we see that uh, two guys fighting means good luck for the third guy outside and outside move again let's see if Breitigam can put it off no he can't no he can't he can't very close indeed uh, over the curves and out of the turn and now he has to defend against Van Bommel this is seriously <laughs> great fun And down the Reta Oposta they go and into Destida do Lago with an attack here by Van Bommel. But um, he pulls back so as not to hit Michael Bräutigam. And this gives Risto Carpet some well deserved uh, breathing space. And whenever we see Rami Kaukula and Ian Wilton going past, uh, we see that they are fighting very closely indeed too. But let's stay with these three because this is absolutely perfect racing. Oh, look at them. Carpet definitely way slower in this infield section here than the other two, but they can't find a way around. They really can't. We have to pay a lot of attention in, in, the, next, in the next corner, the one before yeah. the, the long straight. Let's see who, who handles to make it better. Yes, and Carpet oh. loses it a little, and Bräutigam seizes the chance, he's on the inside, he slips past. Carpet, can he make a counter move? He is trying to, but Bräutigam should win the day. Yes, he does. Very Whoa. close indeed. And if I know Risto Carpet, he will try to move past in the Senna S at once. Watch it. We'll be up to the slipstream again. 
Yes, it will. And Bräutigam making a defensive move. And nope, Carpet can't pull it off. And he is now under problems, under trouble, because uh, Van Bommel, no. Van Bommel stays uh, wisely behind, lets these two fight, and just watches and <laughs> secretly hopes that there'll be a little touch. But there isn't. Uh, both players fully in control here. Risto Carpet in eight now, and Michael Bräutigam having moved up to seven. I suppose we'll see him move away a little in the next one or two laps. That was a serious big move, wasn't it, David? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have been. So, second run down, a cameraman tells me we're with um, Risto Capet in position number 8. And as I predicted, Breutigam pulling away and uh, Capet under serious pressure from Marcin van Bommel in 9. That's position number 9 for Marcin and for the Flying Dutchman team. And uh, then in position number 10, bit of a gap to Robin Johansson for the Gup Klubben. Um, and he is followed by the second of the course online players, by Nicola Dorigatti. Dorigatti in 11, going into the Senna S here, following uh, Robin Johansson. And behind that, it's Hugo Heckenberg for the Flying Dutchman again. So not quite in the top 10, but uh, definitely with a chance to get there before the day is over. And that Black Rebels car you see, I'm afraid, guys, it's a lap down. So in 13, it's uh, Ludovic, Ludovic Kogotti of the Project D. Running in 13, uh, coming from position 12, so obviously he lost one position, and that, of course, is Michael Breutigam, who has slipped past. In 14, Luc Mongas, so they're running back to back, really, the two Project D, with a bit of a gap between them, though. Luc Mongas in 14, that's where he started the race as well. In 15, uh, my teammate Mike, uh, Mikael Larsson up in 15, down two places. Uh, that's um, He was being overtaken by um, Bröttigam and he must have lost a place uh, somewhere else as well. So 15 for the blue flag racing. Looks like we'll score some fine points tonight. In 16, Bosse Jonasson uh, for the Gup Klubben. Down one place. In position number 17, Andreas Hultgreen for the Black Rebels. Last time we saw him, he was in 21, so I suppose he's on a one stop strategy. In 18, Bevan Johnson for the Game Racer Flat Out Club, the junior team. And that is the last car on the grid. We have lost two players. I can't believe it. Ben Buitendijk is out. Ben Buitendijk is out. Yes, Black Rebels. Too bad. Uh, any any news from him? What was wrong? Not really. Not really. I will try to okay. get some information, Eckert. Thank you very much. And there must be a second car out as well. Uh, but we'll keep you updated on who that might have been because we started the race with 21. We're down to 19. But that, I think, Jose, brings us back to position number one, doesn't it? Yes, exactly, uh, Eckhart, where uh, Marco Giuliato is uh, really doing great. He has a big gap. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, colors of the, of the mirrors show you uh, which country we're dealing with here. It's our Italian team, our Italian friends, uh, Marco Giuliato from the course online racing team in position number one and at this point in the race it looks as if it is his race to lose because Mikko Korkiakoski, at least from what I can see, is not making a move on him, is not putting his all out to catch up. He probably is happy with position number two and the points he gets for the team championship uh, because the course online in the championship 
They are down in position number eight and about 200 points away from the leaders. So, uh, yes, they deserve the win, but for the championship, Korkiakowski figures it is not important to um, give it his all. It is much more important to watch what the Roaring Pipes Maniacs are doing. So Giuliato in one, um, doing one extremely clean lap after the other at absolutely breathtaking speed here at uh, Interlagos. By the way, it brings me back to the, the all-time uh, lap record, which is uh, held by none other than Pablo Montoya. Uh, I think we all know that his uh, stint in Formula One was uh, not really the most successful one. He never quite lived up to the promise uh, that um, uh, to the fame that went before him, uh, having won the kart championship, but um, he actually managed to set the fastest lap ever here at Interlagos with a 111.4. That was back in 2004, of course, in the uh, Williams Formula One team. And um, so, uh, what lap times are the guys doing here, uh, I should say, roughly in the door? Um, well, uh, Is it 128, I not, 129? Yeah, I, I'm not, not the, the best one to answer this question because yes, uh, well, I'm uh, with the Mar console. Marco, <laughs> so, Marco, Marco's fastest lap is uh, 129.8. Ah, okay. Is that the Which fastest lap of the race at the moment? Not really, not really. It, it is no? almost a second slower than, than Nico's uh, best, best lap. Okay. But so flat out at this point, have one I more point. Ah, okay. Yeah. And Martin, what lap time does he have? No, a bit, a bit slower than. A bit okay. slower than Marco. Okay. Guys. Uh, yes. Before, sure. before, before you continue, Eckert, let me tell you that uh, if someone wants to visit the course online website, they have a live uh, chat box. So you can go there and type a message. They are following the race live. And, and they're they are... probably very, very happy. Yeah, yeah. of course, of course. They, they, are, they are doing really great. So should you be able to talk Italian to visit that website or will they also take your uh, messages in English? Well, I think they will answer in, in English. In fact, I, I just ah. typed, typed something in English a while ago. Oh, brilliant. And, and if I have the chance, I will ask, ask them why they have a piranha, a piranha facias logotype for the team. Okay, yeah, good question. Good question. I've been wondering. <laughs> so, Giuliato for the course online. Um, and again, my memory fails me, but this would be the first win for them ever, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah, exactly, Eckhart. Will be the first win in the series. That would be fantastic indeed, but it's a long way to go. Um, I'm quickly now off to check um, the timing and see uh, how much time we have left in the race. 37 minutes, the screen tells me. It also tells me the, the, the gaps between the players, which is also very important, of course. Giuliato, 7 seconds lead to Korkiakowski. Korkiakowski, 20 seconds uh, difference to March and Skripczak. Skripczak, 10 seconds to Ben Tusting. And then Tusting, 4 seconds to Brautigam. Brautigam, um, hang on, 1 second only to Kaukula. That's the closest battle on the grid. And then Risto Carpet down another three seconds, almost the same uh, as Marcin van Bommel. That is indeed the closest here, uh, 0.1 apart. Um, Ian Wilton then eight seconds down, uh, two more seconds for Johansson, one more second for Dorigati, four more seconds for Heckenberg. Uh, Kogoti, three seconds to that, then a bit of a gap, eight seconds to Mongas, one second to Larsson, and then a huge gap, 20 seconds to um, Bosse Jonasson. So those are uh, the differences between the players for you. Which means we still have uh, many, many fights um, all along the borderline. No, that was you too. Um, all along um, the grid here. And um, let's see where we move our camera next.
So, 7 and 8 is where we are, cameraman tells me, Risto Kapet, uh, defending his position against Martin van Bommel. We've been here before and we just see Kapet doing a massive slide, he's out on the grass, he almost loses it, but van Bommel staying behind just so, he's in the slipstream now and he is uh, very close indeed, that is a, a matter of virtual centimeters here, of virtual inches, trying to inch past. We see Kaukula just in front of them, and with Carpet taking the defensive line, it's uh, Van Bommel to take the outside. No, he doesn't. He draws back nice. and he stays behind Carpet for another lap. Yes, uh, David. Yes, uh, we had uh, one of the yeah, Miko Miko Korkiakoski at pit. He's pitting out right now, position 12 oh, at that's the moment. Early. Yeah, quite quite early and. Possibly, yeah, position 12, 12, finally, in front of Ludovic Cogotti from Project D. And Carpet, I think, is uh, his tires are completely shot. He's all over the place, and it's a testament to uh, Marcin van Bommel's uh, even temper that he doesn't make a move. Uh, he's staying behind, he is touching him maybe just a little bit now, but he is extremely gentlemanly about uh, all of this, and uh, he's simply waiting, I think, for Carpet to run wide. Sooner or later, he sees that, especially going into the turns, Carpet does have a lot of work to do, whereas uh, Marcin van Bommel's car is clearly much better balanced, and so he can stay much better in control. Look at the lines here. Um, van Bommel, as if on uh, tracks, as if uh, running a train here, and the uh, carpet really sliding uh, all over the place. Down the front straight they go again, and let's see if one of them pits in. Uh, if uh, Korkiakowski pitted, uh, it might be that the second pit window has opened. No, it hasn't. Uh, a nice little spray there of... Um, Ooh, and there goes Carpet again in the brake zone. Again, almost, well, not quite losing it, but uh, some trouble there for him, which again puts Van Bommel in a great position to do a move at the end of this straight here. Look at how close they are. Definitely in the slipstream, marching Van Bommel. Let's see if he can move out of the slipstream successfully. No, yeah, he doesn't. Really, he really close. stays yeah, behind. It oh, is amazing. This. And look now he's making a move on the inside. What a superb Whoa. move by Martin van Bommel. That was, that was the chance he was waiting for. That was the gap he was waiting for. Uh, Carpet with another bit of a problem going just a little wide there in turn number five. Desida do Logo. Uh, sorry, do Lajo. And uh, van Bommel moves past. And now I suppose Carpet should be in the pits any second because, boy, does he have trouble with his tires. This is curious, second, because this corner is, is not uh, especially slow or especially no. different from others, but we have seen many overtakes in there in Formula One or, yep. or yep. even here at STC right now. Yes, I think it's because um, you really have to nail uh, two and three, Senna S and the Curva do Sol, perfectly to take all the speed out on that long Reta Oposta, that long straight. And if yeah. you just make a tiny, a tiny bit of a mistake in either two or three, then uh, you're done for. And now they both go into the pits, and Carpet hits the wall. Going into the pits, Risto Carpet hits the wall. Oh. I hope that didn't damage his car too badly, and I also hope um, that slowed him down uh, before he crossed uh, the line where um, your speed is taken. Guys. So that was... An exciting thing, yes, David. Marco Marco Giuliano already made his second pit, pit stop. In his case, you were right, Eckhart, because he t he took well in in this stop, and he just pit out uh, in position five. Okay, this gives us a new race leader, uh, I should say, number one for Martin Stripchak. So the Roaring Pipes Maniacs are back in the lead. However, Scripchak needs to do a second pit stop. And Michael Bräutigam now. Everybody, silence please for this announcement. Michael Bräutigam is up in two, coming from 20. This is amazing. Uh, it is. And as you said, David, I mean, imagine where he could be um, without that really stupid penalty uh, that we had to slap on Motorsports AG for not um, signing up their players uh, in, the, in the, the time frame that uh, the rules stipulate. So, yeah. Uh, 
Bräutigam in two, and he might even make it into one now. If I saw that correctly, there was someone going into the pits. No, but it wasn't. It wasn't uh, Marcin. Marcin is still out on the track, and Bräutigam. No, Scriptcheck is in the pits, and Bräutigam actually leads the race. Now, figure this. He leads the race. He was coming from 20, and he leads the race. This is absolutely outstanding. I really can't can't understand Eckhart, why why they made that mistake, not allocating their their drivers. Because th there have been two weeks for Interlagos since the last race at Daytona, so sorry for, at Fundidora Park. That there have been plenty of time. Yep. Well, it does happen that you. I mean, I I constantly forget to um, to vote for the for the incidents. I really usually uh, miss it by a day. Um, I'm posting the information on the on the team forum. I'm collecting the results there, and then when I go back, um, vote is already over. But uh, the allocations, uh, come on, guys at Motorsports AG, you can do better than that. And for the next race and for the whole of next season, do please sign up on time because we'd love to see you right up there, like at Le Mans, right up there, winning the races, uh, being up in the pole position. And uh, however, they're in position number one now, obviously enjoying it, obviously relishing their time at the top spot, and uh, Brautigam, or Brautigam, it may be that he, no, he's into the pits now. I was just uh, trying to get very philosophical about uh, taking a completely different strategy if you're coming from the back, but I'm seriously curious about um, the distance he will have to the race leaders once he's back out on the track. I will, I will take a look on that. Brilliant. We see Giuliato going into position number one, and he does have like a tremendous gap to Mikko Korkiakoski in two. So Giuliato, after the second round of pit stops and with about 25 minutes to go, looks like um, this is a safe win for him, him here. They have about the whole of Reta Oposta between uh, him and Mikko Korkiakoski. And Korkiakoski, in turn, is um, a long way away from Marcin Skripchak in three. So, um, at the moment, Korkiakoski is in fact followed by Robin Johansson, who is in three, but he needs to do one more pit stop, I presume, unless he's on a freak strategy. And so, uh, Johansson should pit any minute now and that would then uh, bring us back to a completely stratified field. Okay, Eckhart, uh, we have Michael yep. Rotigan out of pit, 45 seconds before, behind uh, Marco Giuliato. Okay, 45 seconds, uh, that's definitely um, something that he can't make up in the remaining 25 minutes, but uh, what position do we find him in? It's position 7 for him, but very, very close to Risto Capet on position 6. Ah. Okay, and we've seen Risto Carpet. He is a fighter, so uh, that proved, that promises to be a great fight for the last 20 minutes. Yes, and they have uh, Martin ba Van Vommel, Ben Tasting, and Ramika Kaukola behind, so it can oh, be a very fun grab. Yeah. Ooh, that's going to be fun. Well, Robin Johansson stays out another lap, and we just see on the screen that uh, Monsieur Kugotti had to leave the race, so we're down to 17 players uh, still in the race here. Uh, serious problems there, oh. obviously, for Ludovic. Oh, whoa, that whoa, is whoa, too whoa, bad. Whoa, whoa. David, what is it? Oh, big crash and serious problems for for the flat-out club Risto Capet, because uh, there was Michael Brautigan very, very close, starting the, the start-finish line, and then Risto slowed down a bit to enter the pit lane, and Michael Brautigan oh. hit, hit him in the back. So oh, that's too bad. Risto that's couldn't, too bad. couldn't enter the pit. He was spinning around, and he is forced to make another lap, and he has lost a lot of time already. Yes, that'll... that'll... That'll cost him something like seven or eight positions. Ooh, that was bad luck indeed for Risto Capet. This is one of the things I really don't understand about the safety at, at Formula One or circuits like Interlagos, because the driving line goes a, yeah. a lot of time over the, over the pit lane entrance, yep. which something I don't makes it at all. very dangerous. Yep. 
We've, we know there are some, some awful pit exits, uh, but I think really that uh, going into the pits uh, in a place where the, the, the racing line cuts the track is just, you, you and, can't uh, do and that. And top but speed I can't because they, yes, it yes, is yes, not yes, 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 yes. set gear, it is full, full throttle. And huge battle, as uh, David just told you. Um, with Brautigam moving away in six, we have s in seven, Marcin van Bommel. In eight, uh, Ben Tusting. And in nine, Rami Kaukula. And uh, from, uh, I've watched these a uh, couple of laps now, the last two laps, in fact. And uh, they're pretty much on an even space, on an even pace, sorry. But uh, Kaukula, as we mentioned before, is way faster in the turns. And as we mentioned before, doesn't simply find a way round Tusting, uh, or for that matter, round um, Van Bommel. But he's out of reach anyway. So uh, Tusting against Kaukula, that is the closest fight we have on the grid at this moment. And um, they are now approaching uh, Mikael Larsson of Blue Flag Racing, who is about to be lapped by these three. And that no, no, might no, no. open Eckart, a little... Yes, please. He's not lapped. He's in position oh, six. Oh, he's in position. Possibly that means he didn't stop. Yep, that means he is on a slightly different strategy. And so uh, let's see uh, what happens once they uh, come up on Mikael, because that might open that little gap that Rami is desperately trying to find. Now let's hope that we don't see a replay of the incident we've just heard of from David. If and when uh, Mikael... Oh, that was close again. Watch it. Same procedure as last year. Um, Van Bommel had to slow down a little because uh, Larson was pitting in there. Uh, so same problem here. And that um, Kaukula didn't have a chance to move past Tusting. But he is nicely in the slipstream now as they go out on um, Reta Oposta. Okay, guys, we have uh, Robin Johansson from Group Kluven at Pit. And he will possibly pit out on position 10, position 11 for him, possibly. Yep, he started the race in 10, so that would be about uh, where we would uh, yeah, imagine position, he'd end up. Yeah, position 10 in front of uh, Nicola Dorigati. Okay, and right now it's Tusting putting the pressure on Van Bommel uh, with Kaukula waiting to see what happens. And that infield is just so difficult to maneuver uh, if you have breathing space, uh, isn't it, David? Because it's up and down and up and down and the uh, turns are slightly canted on the inside or on the outside, uh, so they really difficult to take, uh, but uh, having somebody behind and in front, so poor Mr. Yes. Tusting, he must be... He must be really sweating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of work <laughs> during the last few years. I think the guys, guys are happy. It's, it's only, I think the guys are happy. It's only virtual racing because in real life, with something like 35 degrees outside, uh, the cockpits should be awfully hot. Yeah. I don't anyway, know if, 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 yeah. If, if you have seen in, in the straights, like, uh, like like the one we, we had now, the main straight, uh, uh, how fantastic pulled away from Rami. Not very much. Kaukula can stay much closer to Tusting than to the other players. So it seems that they maybe run the same amount of wing or close, oh. uh, closely matched setup. And here goes Kaukula on the inside. He's trying to pull it off. It's going to be close. It's going to be really close indeed. But Tusting stays in front. Next move by Kalkula. This time on the inside. Nope. He's uh, uh, he's waiting. He's waiting. But he's definitely made Tusting a bit jittery. Nope. Tusting stays in front. Brilliant move, Ben. So uh, that was um, yes. He tried. It was rather a desperate move by Rami, wasn't it? He's really yeah. desperately trying to get past. Yes, because he. And uh, pro probably, probably, probably no. Uh, that the <laughs> the champ is, is on that fight. I mean, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, in Wilton have lost uh, some positions. Uh, he's P9, and all yes. the points Rami can scores are very very good for his team. 
Yes, and remember, um, six and five only one play, only one point apart. However, if you move into four, it's a jump of three points. So really, but that would be an awfully long way for Rami to go. And um, David, do you have access to the live timing? How many more minutes to go? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, we have 20 minutes to go still. Oh, 20. Yeah, I was getting a bit carried away here. I was down to maybe 12 or so on my internal clock, but uh, 20 minutes. So uh, that, uh, I would say, gives him a fair chance to at least get past Tusting. But I think Van Bommel. Oh, and here goes Tusting sliding, which gives Rami another, another go. Same position. And no. No, rather than uh, knocking Tusting off, uh, he pulls back and uh, loses speed, of course, at the same time, and stays behind. Uh, excellent move by Rami Kaukula, very gentlemanly indeed. And um, he could have squeezed past, but he didn't. Yeah, maybe he doesn't he want to risk too much. Nope, definitely. And he can see, as we can see, that Tusting is virtually going... Oh, and now it hits Kaukula as well. I was just saying that Tusting is going into the turn sideways every single turn, but now Kaukula also has a near spin, and that, I think, takes him out of the race for position number six for good. Don't think that in 20 minutes he can close that gap. Whoa! Very close sight indeed. Uh, thank you, David, for pointing us there. Ian Wilton for the Game Racer flat out, defending his championship points against Gubklubbens, Robin Johansson in 10. And it looks as if Johansson is way faster at this point in the race than Wilton. And it's only a matter of time. And we see the second course online player there. That's uh, Nicola Dorigatti. And uh, he might be uh, the one lurking in the background. Yeah, possibly the, the aerodynamics of Ian Wilton are not working quite well, if you look at yes, his nose. Yes, it's huge it doesn't special. Look, yeah, no. it doesn't look as about that anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> looks rather crumpled, doesn't it? And yeah, well, the Johansson is a bit crappy, but, but this Making model, a move yeah, there, touching Wilton, Wilton goes off oh. a little. Johansson lets him rejoin, Johansson lets him rejoin, so no loss of time, but... Um, what I predicted has happened, that of course the course online racer gets closer. Wilton trying to stay oh, in front. Oh, here, here it is. And there it is, yes. Johansson really, and, and Wilton will be lucky to defend that position number 10 against um, Nicola Dorigatti coming up from behind. His car is banged up too, front right, but doesn't look half as bad as Ian Wilton's. Wilton must have run into serious trouble somewhere along the line. And... Um, I don't know, uh, is this, uh, would you rather go into pits and have it repaired? Uh, is he losing too much time? What do you think, David? No, I think with 20 minutes to go, I would never go on pit tackle because you will lose at least 30, 40 seconds maybe. Yep. You will lose a lot of positions. Definitely, but uh, the way it is, look at that. Uh, he is really extremely slow, poor Ian. And I think he'll have a, a very hard time uh, uh, trying to defend that position number 10 against uh, Nicola, who's coming up. Yeah, he will. He will have a hard time then. So, 17 players still in the game. And your, uh, your very own, Andreas Hultgreen, running in position 16. Uh, so, uh, David, did you notice? Uh, I think he was on a one of strategy, wasn't he? I, I really can't confirm you, Eckhart. Okay. Can't. Yeah, it looked to me because um, after the first uh, bunch of uh, pits, he, he gained some positions and it looked to me as if he was the sole player on a, on a one-stop strategy. It would fit. Um, he, is, he is really one of these players uh, who's doing his own thing, really, uh, in the game. And uh, if he decides that uh, he doesn't really stand a chance, uh, 
he's going for the crazy option, and he's going to, if, he, if he did a one-stop strategy, uh, I think it paid off quite well, because uh, position 16, he stayed out of the trouble, he's still in the game, and uh, he started in 18, so he actually won two positions. Yes, anyway, uh, I am checking his, his lap times, yes. and if, if I am understanding it right, he made a couple of stops, second at lap 17 and lap 34. Okay. Okay, there goes my theory. <clears throat> Thank you, David. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but it was a good guess. It was a good guess. Okay. Oh, Nicola Dorigan is putting a lot of pressure on the A. Yep, indeed. That is definitely the battle we should be following for positions number 10 and 11. Nicola Dorigati against Ian Wilton, and that is not quite the place where Ian Wilton got nabbed the last time, but uh, pretty much. And, um, yeah, Dorans do look different in real life, folks. Uh, don't worry. I was thinking, Eckhart, about the STC prediction game we have on our yes. forum. I, I think no one expected uh, Motor AG and Course Online team to be on the on the top five. I, I don't know, possibly no. the guys of Course Online and Motor AG did, but <laughs> I think then everybody again, was expecting flat out racing and RPM, Eckhart. Definitely, definitely. It's a bit, it's a bit strange, isn't it, that the, t the two teams leading in the championship um, are really running a distinct uh, second and third here tonight, whereas Chorus Online, not really out of the clear blue sky. Remember, they had a superb performance at Fundidora, and they've been really um, improving their performance all season long, haven't they? Yes, yes, of course. Ian Wilton is doing one heck of a job um, defending here against uh, Dory Gutty, really uh, trying to make the inevitable not happen. But um, I suppose it's only a matter of time. Especially in those slow sections here in the infield, um, he does have a handful. He's virtually throwing the car into the turns and uh, letting it go sideways into the turns to just find some grip uh, on the outside and then uh, be able to get out of the turns again. And Dorigati does well to not <laughs> try to make a move at all there. I think he's best advised to make a move on long straight. However, he looks rather slow on the straight to me, Dorigati, does he? Sorry, Eckhart. I don't know if... Never mind, never mind. I was that just was... Uh, wondering about Dorigati's speed on the, on the straight. He seems to be rather slow on the straight. And so really he's uh, having the same problem that Rami had, that uh, in the yeah. turns, obviously, with that banged up car, Ian is much, much slower. But on the straights, there's no way uh, Nicola can get close. So he certainly has to wait for another mistake. And... Um, Ian Wilton will be, you know, he's, he's having a, a handful with that, pl with that car here. It's um, all over the place in the turns, and he's doing what I think is a brilliant job of just keeping it together. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, it will be up to the tires, possibly, because if, yep. if Nicola needs a mistake, Ian will not do it uh, for free. It will come with, yes. uh, with the tires gone or something like that. Yes, 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 yes. And the way he treats that right, the tires will be going like, you know, snow before the morning sun or something like that. Um, it will be very, the, the way he has to handle that car is obviously very hard on the tires. Oh, look at that. Slide, slide, slide. And now here's the chance for Dorigati. He's on the inside here, touching. Dorigati now gets nicely into the slipstream, lines up there, and he might make a move as they approach the center, as we'll possibly see a defensive move now on the start and finish straight. 
No, Dorigati has. No, he hasn't. I thought he would have a bit of an open space on the left-hand side now. They're into the center S, and Dorigati has to pull back again. That was the closest he got in the last five laps, I would say. By the way, Eckhart, I have an answer at the course online <laughs> website about the Piranha stuff. I, I asked them why the Piranha logo, and they <laughs> they just answered that, that the Piranha logo is because... Uh, <laughs> yeah, because Marco is like a Piranha. Ah, okay, eating, <laughs> eating everybody else in the fish pond. Yeah, but somebody... Then, Nikolai is a shark, possibly. <laughs> yeah, possibly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> White one. Uh, <laughs> talking about uh, strange fish, uh, we have Marcin Skripcek down to seven. Uh, none of us noticed, and he has serious problems uh, following Rami Kaukula, who is in six now, which means that Michael Bräutigam is on the podium. And something else that is strange, I've just clicked uh, through, through the field here, is that Mikko Korkiakowski in two is running so slow that he is actually being that... Um, Mikkel Larson of um, Blue Flag Racing actually had the chance to unlap himself and he's just done it. So Korki Akoski, either he is taking it extremely carefully or he is um, also suffering some problems here and his car is completely banged up on the left hand side. So we might see some drama unfold here in the last 10 minutes with Korki Akoski rapidly losing speed here and Bräutigam coming up from behind. He is, well, not within striking distance. He's about 20 seconds, I would say, away. So, I would tell you. Thank you very much. Yeah, exactly. 25 seconds behind. Oh, well, good guess. 25 seconds behind. And Korkiakowski lost what I would say are about two to three seconds in the last lap on Mikkel Larsson. And, um, well, how much time to go before the finish, uh, sh David? It's Eight minutes and a half right now. Ooh, that will be okay for Korkiakowski. But um, Breutigam will definitely push. Van Bommel in four. And Tusk, a superb performance for Black Visor in five. So we really do have um, a completely unexpected lineup here in the top five, as you said. But, uh, so sorry guys, what, what did I miss, because what happened to Marcin? I have no idea, I obviously have no idea, um, I, I, I didn't see it too, um, just as you were talking about the Chorus Online logo, I, I used the free time, so to speak, um, to quickly click um, through the standings, and I saw Marcin down in 7, I couldn't quite believe my eyes. Um, I don't know what happened at all, I uh, don't know if he had an off moment, the way we saw Rami having half a spin earlier on. And uh, he got passed by um, Tusting, by Van Bommel, by Brautigam, and also by Brautigam, sorry, and also um, by Rami Kaukula. You know what, Eckhart? Yes. I will. I, I will go and take a look on the points each team will get if the if they oh, have the race like that. I will that be will be very very interesting. One minute. Yeah, I'll, I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, watching Martian Stripchak for telltale signs of something wrong, I can only tell you that he is definitely not fast in the turns. And he is uh, taking his lines as clean as he possibly can. That's the way I interpret what I see here on my screen. Um, so this might point also to um, a fuel problem that he might have, uh, because if you have too little fuel on board, you obviously try to drive as cleanly as you possibly can, because that will definitely save on fuel. So, okay, other I than that, yes please, here are the I, points. Uh, so, points forecast, if we finish the way the grid is now, where will we okay. be? Okay. We will have RPM, we'll get one point for the pole position, the, the scored. And ending the race uh, at, at that places, we'll score 42 points. 
which uh, will be uh, 411 points for them. And Flat Out Racing will have one point because of the fastest lap for Miko. 49 points overall, will score 7 points more than RPM. Okay, we should put them at 424. Exactly. Well, that opens the gap. However, it's not really the kind of gap that's insurmountable. With a with a brilliant performance last race at Hamilton, RPM could still uh, be the champions, couldn't they? Yeah, of course. Yes, and I predict a very intense week in the, you know, in the war system, because there was a lot of action between uh, with both teams yes. involved. I think this is this is time to send a message of goodwill to both teams, uh, uh, and uh, do remember that uh, incidents being reported. The forum is strictly for discussing the incidents and nothing else. So um, this is already uh, a, a pre-warning <laughs> to everyone involved. David will otherwise take out the posts as quickly as you can say hello and goodbye at the same time. Well, five minutes to go. Race is almost finished and um, I suppose we should give um, the airtime to the race leader. Or, well, let's move to positions 8 and 9, because there's a big fight there between Robin Johansson for the Gubklubben and Hugo Heckenberg, the second of the Flying Dutchman players. And he moved up, did he, from, from 9 to 8, and Johansson moved up from 10 to 9. So they've been uh, kind of together for the whole game. And uh, Heckenberg here and uh, Johansson are uh, fighting, slugging it out. Ouch. And Heckenberg now... Oh, oh. Heckenberg touching the grass, getting in the way of Johansson. Then Johansson could just avoid rushing into him uh, big time. And Heckenberg does have to take a longer way here. And that means that um, he's down to 10. He's down to Nicola. 10 because a lucky, a very lucky Nicola Dorigati slips past. And this is definitely the course on my night. Folks, you have both cars in the top 10. You have Dorigati in 9, and you have um, Giuliato in 1. What a day, what a night. And let me tell you, Eckhart, that Ian Wilton on P11 is being chased yes. like, by Luke Manga from Project D, and oh, he's getting closer Ian. and closer. Three minutes poor, to go. Poor Ian. Yeah. Three minutes to go. Well, Mongas does have a chance. He's a fighter too. And let me also tell you that uh, Blue Flag Racing are still in the game. Poster helps here from Mikkel Larsson in 13. Great show. He has recovered the position that he held at the start and um, he's still in the game. Brilliant. Very well done. As I was saying earlier, um, airtime for the guy in front and um, David, you keep us updated on Monsieur Mongas. Is that okay? Of course, it is. Well, we, we should go there with Ian Wilton. He's already over, over him. <laughs> yeah, we can see it in the back if we follow Marco Giuliato, because he has just lapped the two of them. And we can follow their fight in the back as we watch Marco Giuliato. Okay, so we follow position number one, with uh, should be oh. the second to last lap. There is a and hit David, between what's them. happening? Hit a between hit Wilton and Dorigati? Yeah, I think Ian Wilton is on, on serious problems with the tires. Yeah. And in the corner, before the long straight, uh, Luke ah. Mangas hit the back of, of Ian's car. Okay, Hamilton corner, I call it. Uh, Shun <laughs> Shun Sao in uh, real life. Don't know how to pronounce that one. And yes, they have both lost a lot of uh, 
a lot of time here because Giuliato um, is now well clear of them and no chance to see them in the back of position number one. But let's stay with um, Marco Giuliato. I could just see Ian Wilson up, uh, appearing there at um, the far side of Reto Aposta. Giuliato, he may take home the course online uh, first victory in about two minutes. Uh, David. Race direction tells me we're pretty close to the last lap. Race direction tells me this might be the last turn for Marco Giuliato as we see him speeding out of uh, Shinsao into Subirado's boxes. The last time out, uh, he passes or he laps a Flying Dutchman player. He's out onto the start and finish straight, and we'll see by the behavior of the car. Yes, definitely, it's the win. It's the win for Marco Giuliato. It's the first win for Course Online. Congratulations to Italy. A superb performance by Marco. And here we see Mikko Korkiakoski approaching the start and finish with a rather slow game racer flat out car but he brings it home in position number two scoring a lot of points for the championship leaders they'll be very proud of him and this leads us to position number three it's the surprise man of the race Michael Brautigam Michael Brautigam uh, for the Romanian team Motor AG and he brings it home in three he's on the podium Position number four goes to Flying Dutchman player Martin van Bommel. Martin in position number four in the finish now and Ben Tusting in five. Nice spin there, Ben. And here we are, the extremely unhappy Roaring Pipes Maniacs bring home Rami Kaukula and dig this, his motor gives up as he crosses the line and so does Martin's motor figure that one and uh, Robin Johansson in position number eight with Nicola Dorigati uh, very close to catching him but not quite in position number nine and that's your uh, top nine for you ten goes to Hugen Hecken Hugo Heckenberg but uh, I suppose right now it's time for the Italian anthem. Everybody stand at attention. Italy, here we go. And that was the Italian anthem for race winner um, Marco Giuliato, of course, online, taking home the maiden victory for that Italian team. 
in their second season of the STC, the Sim Racing Team Challenge. And as usual, this exciting race was brought to you live by PSR TV and by GameHosters.net. I'm waiting for the podium finishers to join me in the uh, broadcasting room and I can hear some people knocking on the door. Let's see who is with me in half a second. Well, what a race it was. We're still waiting for the winner, but um, we do have Mikko Korkiakoski with me and uh, Michael Bräutigam. Uh, so let's start with number three this time round. Uh, last on the podium, but what a great race. Uh, Michael, uh, however did you manage to get from position number 20 to position number three? <laughs> yes, from last of, of, on the grid to last on the podium. It was just a great race. I mean... Uh, it was very riskful. Um, I started with uh, soft tires, and uh, I really used uh -huh. uh, three sets of soft tires, and I hoped they would hold on. <laughs> and uh, yes, it it was just went out. I mean, I had uh, three warnings for the tires in the end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was really uh, I was sliding all over the place, and it was but it was great fun. It was so much fighting, and it was a great race. <laughs> Hello. And heads off to Marco and Miko. Great race. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that brings us to second position. We're, we're moving up uh, from, from uh, three to two to one this time, folks. Uh, so, Miko Korkiakoski, number two. Um, it's a good move up from the grid position. So, some comments on the race from you. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a really disappointing qualifying. Um, uh, it was really just good to lap up. I was looking for a 27, <laughs> but it was over a second slower than I expected, so it was a crap lap. But then I knew that uh, my teammate, or well, the little little teammate, Aristo, is going to let me pass him quite quickly so I can get uh, back to the front battle. And um, uh, the, the start of the race was uh, really hectic with uh, people making mistakes, some, some nice passing going on and uh, I had a tough time with Rami when he, he first put me into the wall in the, in the front straight and uh, then, uh, then we had a moment in, in turn uh, four. I, I, was, I was side by side and was going, going to pass him and, and he just he turned in and really basically had nowhere to go. He, he spun and uh, well, from there on, I had some some damage in the car, but uh, it still was okay. Uh, then, I think a few laps later, uh, Marco and uh, Martin had a moment in the last turn. Or oh, Martin had a moment. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but uh, I was able to get right right in there and uh, actually pass Martin and and all, almost Marco, but uh, it was too tight. I just couldn't couldn't go for it there. And we basically had to, had the same speed with Marco uh, uh, in, in the beginning of the, of the stints, like maybe first five laps. But uh, I think he was he was managing his tires a bit better because I started to lose time uh, over the stint, and, and towards the end my my tires were too bad. I just couldn't hold on, and I, I tried to be early to uh, make up some time. But uh, of course he did the right thing and came in just on the next lap and I wasn't able to close the whole gap and and with this track it's quite impossible to pass if, if you're at, at equal top speed so it was a, <laughs> even though if I would have caught him I would have been impossible almost to pass so I have to say congrats Marco it was an awesome drive amazing I would say even and uh, well if I can say something in the end I've talked yeah, long enough, ahead. but uh, but still, uh, I'd like to. Um, it's my last race, and I'd like to thank all, everybody at uh, Flat Out, and especially Mike Simi and uh, Don Mills Bros, and and uh, well, everybody basically just taking me in and letting me drive for the for the team this season because I didn't have a seat. So it was was great to have the chance, and uh, thanks, guys. 
Thank you very much, um, Miko Korkiakoski. Yes, uh, five races are up for you, so you just have to watch and see what happens in the last race. Uh, this is going to be a really nail-biting experience for you. But that leads us to uh, race leader tonight, to our winner, um, Marco Giuliato. And I hear that uh, Jose is going to be the translator. So um, first of all, congratulations, Marco. A superb win. Thank you very much, Marco. Well, um, a few comments um, on those very hectic first uh, two or three laps uh, from your view. Uh, yeah, it, uh, I was uh, a bit uh, faster than uh, Marcin, and I try uh, a lot to pass him, but uh, uh, in the last uh, turn I touch him, and uh, then he, he go. Uh, Largo, Nicola, sorry. Yeah. Wide. Wide. Wide, yes. Yeah. And uh, I can pass, pass uh, inside. Yes, and um, Miko just said that... Um, Miko just said that uh, he... Um, had problems with the tires uh, as the stint went on. How did you manage your tires? Yeah, because I have a perfect setup, and for this I have to uh, thank my teammate Nicola because we uh, uh, developed, developed, sorry. Developed, 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 developed a very, very, very perfect setup. Ah, okay, so Nicola Dorigati is with us too. And Nicola, um, both players in the top 10, That is, uh, is that the best team result you've had so far? Uh, no, for us it's not the best uh, result since uh, uh, on Troy Rivier we did the fourth and sixth, and I did the sixth place. Today I had some problems, so <laughs> I'm happy, but not too much. Okay, but you're happy, of course, for uh, winning the race as a team here, and yeah, uh, will I'm we see your team again next year? I'm very happy for uh, Marco wins, and uh, I have to say that uh, I. I knew that he could win because uh, he is a very fast driver. In our team, we have some very fast driver, and he is one of the fastest, or probably he's <laughs> okay. the one fastest. Right. So, a deserved win then at the end of the day for um, Course Online. As uh, David already said, I think nobody expected that result in the prediction game that we have on the forum. I don't think anybody would have predicted a Course Online in one and an uh, AG Motor in three. And uh, thank you very much, the podium, for these uh, very interesting interviews. And um, you. basically, thank see you, you all too. on the forum then. Well, uh, David Jose, time to round up uh, the broadcast, I would say. Um, finishing comments on this race, uh, David, from you maybe, and also a bit of an outlook to the last race. Uh, what are your ideas on uh, Hamilton? Yeah, well, first, to end, to end commenting about Interlagos, I would like to congratulate, especially Course Online Racing, because they did never surrender during the season, and they have shown, they, they have the spirit the fighting spirit to, to be there and I, I think they will be up in the standings next season if they continue continue like, like this. And uh, for Hamilton, well what to say, the season is ending on a, on a street circuit which is not very slow, it is not as Trois Rivières but it is a short lap so we will have a lot of traffic and a lot of uh, close fighting and especially for for some spots of the of the standing second okay it sounds like another interesting broadcast will that be next week or in two weeks no next it is week. next week Ah, okay, so very little time for the teams to prepare. I, I suppose yeah. the top teams already have uh, somebody in the background working on the set, working on the strategy, where else the smaller teams will start all over again now with only six days to go. And uh, Jose, uh, last thoughts from you on today's race? No, I just uh, want to congratulate uh, all the teams, okay, especially Course Online today, but uh, all the teams for, for this season and uh, whatever it, it uh, happens at uh, Hamilton, I think we had a great season and uh, that's the, the, most, the most important thing. 
Well, yeah, definitely it is. And so I hope to see you all again at uh, Hamilton. I hope you'll all tune in again to PSR TV, brought to you by GameHosters.net, the Sim Racing Team Challenge. One week to go, one week in which we'll have interesting discussions on the forum, I predict that. And uh, we'll be back with the uh, last season, with the last, sorry, with the last race of the season. And this is it for today. This is your friendly voice, Eckhart von Glan, and bye-bye from here.